Hey, and welcome to Not Sorry, Love Lori. My name is Lori. We're going to be talking about my experience on the psych ward being a patient, but first, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment. So I've been a patient three times, and first time it was about a month, second time about a month, and the third time was actually one night. First time was because um, I had, a, had an attempt um, the second time was because I, I was again unsafe to be alone by myself and same with the third time. And I took myself to the hospital those three times. Honestly, it saved my life uh, many times and um, it helped me to get correctly diagnosed. It helped me to understand my symptoms, the etymology of it all, like trying to understand like where it comes from and help me to understand how my treatment can be directed because I know a lot of what I dealt with is a lot of trauma and my brain had trauma responses to what was going on and yeah so anyways no shame having mental illness no shame i was a vegan at the time that i was in hospital they did offer a vegan diet but it was pretty unreliable in the sense that like they would say they were going to send me soy milk but then they didn't and like they'd always forget and i'm pretty sure that the soft food diet you know when people eat and they can't eat hard food so it's like soft and mushy Pretty sure that was the vegan diet as well. Like I think they were the same diet because it was, it was soft. It was very soft, um, not very delicious to be honest. Uh, bathrooms and showers. So the way it worked in our unit was two people per room. You had curtains dividing you. There was a bathroom with a toilet and a sink and there's no locks on the bathroom door or our bedroom door just to be safe in case somebody needs to come in and help us. Shower was in an, a different area and like it didn't have a lock on the door so I was really scared. I'm like, oh my God, someone's gonna come in. But what we would do is like hang a towel and close the door so there's like a towel hanging so people know like, oh, someone's in there. But like, you never know what could happen. But like, I was fine, I was fine. So I never experienced being sedated. Like, you know, you hear about people being injected forcefully against their will. It, re it really doesn't happen as much as people think. And usually it's because that person is in a really, really critical state and it is likely the best thing for their for their care. So anyways, I, can, I mean, I can't make that determination, but I, I haven't experienced that. I haven't experienced being in restraints and that from what I've heard can be really upsetting and even re-traumatizing. But again, at the same time, I because I used to work in mental health, but I've also been a patient on a psych ward. So very challenging because it, obviously being powerless is not a good feeling and especially if you're dealing with so much stuff right so that was that was hard but it didn't I didn't really see it happening that much in at least where I was so I did take medication when I was there taking uh, like the first thing they offered was sleeping meds because it's really important when you have mental illness to get a lot of sleep especially because of my substance abuse and all of that, I wasn't sleeping very much and my brain really needed the rest. So I was very open to trying medication. I always talked it through with my doctors, with the side effects and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't forced to take medication. Some people are, um, if they're deemed incapable of making their own treatment decisions. In terms of staff, like it was very mixed. I did have a lot of negative experiences, but I also had a lot of positive experiences. Um, it kind of reached a point at one point when I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. They just, uh, to me, it felt like I was being stigmatized. I felt like I was getting um, like rude glances from nurses. And the thing is, it's hard for me to tell if that's just my paranoia or if that was actually going on. But the thing is that I've worked on the other side of the nursing station and there is stigma there. There is, unfortunately, um, a lot of people, even people who work in mental health do have stigma and even people with mental illness, um, have a lot of stigma and shame ourselves and, and other people that have mental illness. So for whatever reason, that was the case. So I ended up leaving not too long after that, I remember, like, cause I just, I felt like I wasn't having a therapeutic experience anymore, but I had gotten a lot of help in terms of like the direction I was going. Also being on disability at the time, I, I wanted, like I couldn't work. So I needed some financial support and I was able to do that paperwork or a lot of it with the social worker that was on the unit. So I was able to make use of um, the resources that were there. So being an inpatient can be beneficial, guys. If you are in crisis, please go. You deserve treatment. I know it's not gonna be a perfect experience, but it could get better. Listen, I love psych nurses. You guys have a hard job, one of the hardest jobs. Nurses and teachers, you guys are dealing with all the stuff. 
Um, but there are issues with the healthcare system and being somebody who worked on the other side, again, on the other side of the nursing station, there definitely can be better training and just figuring out ways to keep people empathetic and or sympathetic at least. Was I afraid of other patients? People asked me, no. I mean, there was one patient who did fixate on me um, and he became a little bit obsessive and he did try to like kiss me and he like just, it was becoming problematic. So he ended up leaving to go to another unit. Um, luckily that was dealt with pretty quickly. Like once he tried to touch me, I was like, okay, like this is, this is now I'm, I'm trying to heal and this I'm being assaulted, like not cool. One incident I did have was one of my roommates, she did urinate on the floor and that's something that, you know, she, she was struggling and that was her thing. And I just knew it was like unsanitary, that kind of thing. So I told the nurses and they didn't believe me. That sucks. Uh, sucked a lot and once my mom came to visit and actually saw my mate roommate um, urinate on the floor she told the nurses and the nurses then were like oh it's real so that was pretty pretty invalidating when they like wouldn't believe me they thought I was lying about it so I was allowed my phone and my laptop it was different for everybody some people weren't really allowed their phones i like I, I don't know the exact reasoning maybe it was because their phone was maybe interfering with their treatment in some way for whatever reason but for me i ended up being able to keep it because i started my youtube channel like at that time basically what up welcome to my youtube go to my earliest videos and you will see some of my videos in the hospital actually i was allowed to leave at certain times. It really depends on the treatment. So everybody's is different. For me, initially, I didn't want to go outside because I thought I would end up relapsing and I was scared for that. So I didn't go anywhere for like a while. Um, but then I was able to get small outings where I'd go for like half an hour, go to the convenience store, come back. There was like a bigger outing that I did at one point. And so just gradually sort of trying to get me to reintegrate back into society because I'm not going to be in the hospital like for a long time, ideally. They want us to you know reintegrate back into society hopefully in like a safe way in terms of like friends each time i went i found cool people that um like everybody was pretty chill like there weren't a lot of people that i was like trying to stay away from um but there were people that were really nice and somebody who like i stay in touch with now uh they're awesome maybe they're watching this video what up you know what it, you know who i'm talking about you know it's you um yeah, she's lovely. So anyways, yeah, I did make some really awesome, cool friends, but like, we're, it's not like we're in touch all the time, but like we support each other from a distance, if you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, hey, what's up? Respect. And they're like, yeah, what? <laughs> I'm so old. So if you have any other questions, please leave them down below. I would be very happy to answer them in another video. And I just, I wanna remind you guys, by the way, don't shame yourself, random throwing that in there. Well, that's all folks. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your support and your love. And it's just, it's this symbiotic relationship of awesomeness. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. And I will see you guys soon. Be gentle with yourself. No shame.